Hello YouTube, welcome to my San Francisco 49ers realistic rebuild in Madden 18. This week, we just got done beating the Dallas Cowboys on a really weird last play. If you didn't catch that, go ahead and watch the last episode, but the very end of it, so weird. I still can't explain it, but uh, we're going to go ahead and advance the week. Let's get on with episode 11. I'm excited for this one, guys. We are at the trade deadline. We're getting closer and closer closer to the end of the season but first things first let's see what happens we have trade offers for Jeremy Curley so I do believe we might have put him on the block he has been pretty good wide receiver for us this year um, but we're just gonna see what we can get for him we do have other wide receivers we want to give a chance to and we'll likely be looking for people in free agency so let's kind of see what teams are interested the Vikings have a third and seventh the Panthers are offering a second and seventh these are all next year's picks. Eagles are offering this year's fourth and a next year's seventh. The Cardinals are offering a next year's second. So let's see. Panthers next year's second, 61, and a seventh. We don't need the sevens. Let's just go ahead with the Arizona Cardinals offer. They need another wide receiver. Curly, 78 overall. You are our second best option. We're not really in the playoff on this year. We do want to make some trade deadline deals. Next year, our draft class is going to be so stacked with picks, so we're going to be good. We're going to have a lot of trade leverage, and we have a lot of options. We can go with tons of second-round picks. Jeremy Curley, you're going to have to go. I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, we're going to make some room for Juju Smith-Schuster, maybe another free agent signing, or possibly a trade at the trade deadline. We'll have to see. All right, guys, so we are looking for that second great wide receiver, and I think I found the guy, Martavis Bryant and the Steelers. Um, hypothetically speaking, this is not too far-fetched, but let's just say the Steelers got really upset that Martavis Bryant cannot get back from suspension and can't stay on the field. Um, they're just looking to go a different direction. It happens all the time in the NFL. Um, Martavis Bryant's a very talented wide receiver. Some people in Pittsburgh have said that he has the skills to be a better wide receiver than Antonio Brown, but being that he just can't stay on the field, um, I think the, the Steelers are just ready to move on from him. Um, they're going to want a draft pick in return, and they also have somewhat of a need at D-tackle. So, Andrew Billings, yes, he was on someone's practice squad and could be signed, um, but he's shown promise since he's come to our team, and that's upped his value a little bit. Um, they can see he can play in the NFL. And also, we're throwing in there a fourth-round pick next year, which is not a bad pick. Um, when you think about, like, Randy Moss got traded for a sixth-round pick, this is really not too far-fetched. Let's see if they'll take it. They're interested, but not too interested. Let's throw in the seventh next round. So fourth and seventh next year. Still not interested enough. Fourth and a fifth, I think, would even be okay. We have a lot of second round picks in that year's draft. Still not buying it. So we might have to give up a bit for them. But look at how many second round picks. We have so many second round picks next year. We have one, two, three first round picks. One, two, three, four, five, six second round picks. Wow. Let's give them two fourths and see what they say. We have so many second round picks that we're gonna, not going to need um, that many later round picks. They did not like that. Let's see what happens if it's a third. Next year, third round pick. Getting very close. So I think if we throw in a seventh, we can get it. So next year, third round pick. Next year, seventh round pick. And Billings. And we didn't get Mark Davis Bryant yet. Come on, guys. Okay, a fifth is a little high. See if we can get their six out of it then. Their next year's sixth. Okay, maybe just their next year's seventh. Or maybe I can't get any. Trade accepted. Okay. So we got our guy. We have Pierre Garcon and Martavis Bryant. They were able to fleece us. Well, not fleece us. They were able to get a third round pick and a fifth round pick in next year's draft and a D tackle to help them fill their holes for now. And in return we got a, a very talented wide receiver, Martavis Bryant, with a, a well rounded skill set. He's gonna be a great wide receiver for us going forward. I think anybody else we're gonna be pursuing in free agency. But we have good wide receivers for now. We have some pretty good reserves, but our first two are Pierre Garcon and Martavis Bryant. I think Garoppolo can do a lot of damage with that. So we did make a trade at the deadline, it's Martavis Bryant. Okay guys, one more deal I'm looking to do here. It's gonna make sense in a second for both teams. Um, the Giants have really, really, really struggled. 
at the left tackle position with Derek Flowers. He's not really been what they've wanted him to be so far. They have a need at left tackle. We're offering them Joe Staley, who's one of the better left tackles in the league, 86 overall. In return, we're getting back a young Eric Flowers, 23, who hasn't shown promise so far. We think we can turn him around, and if not, find somebody in free agency or at the end of the season. But what's important here is we're getting another cornerback that can... Um, I'll show you here. Another cornerback that can be a starter for us. Um, I'm really only targeting guys that aren't the best on their team. So Janoris Jenkins and Rodgers Cromartie are obviously two really good cornerbacks. So Eli Apple's not even going against the best guys every day in the league. He's only 22 years old, and we think that he has the potential to cover those really good guys. So we're going to bring him into our team and make him a starter. Um, I think that's the whole point of this realistic rebuild, is taking people who are maybe underappreciated on some teams and making them stars on our team. Not to say Eli Apple's underappreciated, he's very good, but he's sitting under the shadow of two very good corners. So we're going to go ahead, try to get Eli Apple, trade Joe Staley for Eric Flowers, because Joe Staley is really what they want. Ray Ray Armstrong's going to be hard to lose, but we have Ruben Foster. Um, and again, for agency, we're looking to fill a lot of holes at, at the end of the year. But to be able to get Eli Apple, a starting cornerback for us, Eric Flowers, a guy that can play at left tackle in the, in the meantime, and then also in this trade is Evan Engram, who I love. Um, they haven't really utilized him a lot this year. He's got 28 receptions for 322 yards. Um, not a great year. He's not, he's not well on his way, let's say, to an awesome season. But he's got some insane stats if you can get him on our team. 90 speed, 91 acceleration out of the tight end position. We think we can really work with him. So Evan Engram, Eric Flowers, Eli Apple. For Joe Staley, one of the better left tackles in the league. Ray Armstrong, a really good young right outside linebacker. I don't like giving up Armstrong in this deal. But it looks like it's going to have to happen. And they're going to need some more out of this too to be interested in it. So yeah, Ray Ray Armstrong's 26, but we are going with Ruben Foster in the future, so I feel a little bit better about it. We'll try to throw in next year's 7th, they'll probably have to move up to a 4th. Okay, or we might have to put a late pick this year. 7th or 6th, or maybe even 5th. Let's go 6. fifth they might want. Otherwise we're looking at next year's picks. Oh, so close. So close to making that deal happen. So next year fourth maybe that'll entice him. Maybe not. Give him our highest fourth round pick next year. Ah, oh, this is going to be tough guys. I'm going to get back to you when I have something. Alright guys, so what I did here is I switched Ray Ray Armstrong so that we could keep him because I really like Ray Ray Armstrong. Um, and I added in Jimmy Ward, our starting free safety. He's a 26 year old, he's 80 overall, but we did find a steal in Marcus Williams in free agency early this year. He's coming back from injury and we're going to want to give him a shot. So 76 overall, 20 year old Marcus Williams. We're going to give him a shot. We're going to trade Jimmy Ward because they seem to want him a little bit more. And then we're going to go ahead and try to trade some picks to get this deal done. So close. Okay, this this might go through here with the fifth rounder this year. And they accepted it. Okay, so that was the one that was a hair short with Ray Ray Armstrong, but they're okay with Jimmy Ward. So this trade actually worked out pretty darn well for the Giants. They're able to get a really, really good free safety in Jimmy Ward. Um, it hurts to lose him, but we really needed secondary help in the cornerback position, so we got Eli Apple. Joe Staley's hard to give up for Eric Flowers, but at the same time we picked up Evan Engram, a tight end that we're really going to want for the future. I think it's a good trade for both teams, honestly. I think it works out pretty well. Eli's already got some pretty good tight end weapons. Engram, they really liked, obviously, they drafted him pretty early, but obviously, if they can solidify their left tackle position, get a pretty good safety and a draft pick, trade makes sense for both teams. I really like it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Alright, we're going to have to make room um, on our roster to get get some room for backup safety now that we traded Jimmy Ward away. Um, Jeremy Sprinkle is the one that's going to have to go. We do like our other tight end options. Um, we're going to go ahead and free up two million of cap room. We have Evan Engram, George Kittle, and Rico Gathers as our tight end. I really like that setup. We're going to go ahead here and we're going to have to fill this free safety position because we only have one of them. Let's go find a free safety. It turns out that free safety position we do have a guy. Whoops. 
My bad. We do have a guy that is on our practice squad in Delano Hill. We're gonna go ahead and sign him to our active roster for only a million dollars. So he's just a backup, and Marcus Williams is really the guy we're going to give a shot for the rest of the year at the free safety position. If he can perform the second half of the year, we're not going to have to look for a different safety because he's only 20 years old and 76 overall, so he can get a lot better. Um, if he doesn't perform, we're going to have to go elsewhere, look at the draft, or look at free agency, but we're going to give him a shot. We traded away our starting safety um, to, the, to the Giants, but let's go ahead with Marcus Williams, see what happens. Let's take a quick look at the new shaken up depth chart course from last episode we have a trade that involved Tevin Coleman he's our now our starting running back we have Tarek Cohen and Joe Williams also I do like their backfield a lot now the wide receiver position we have Pierre Garcon is our number one Martavis Bryant is our number two 86 overall 82 overall much improved from what it was before and then Juju Smith-Schuster and Marquise Goodwin our next wide receivers Marquise Goodwin with 95 speed will be playing in the slot Smith-Schuster only 21, 22 years old, 70 overall, and then we have McAvoy and Bullringer. At the tight end position, we were able to pick up Evan Engram. We have George Kittle, who's been playing a pretty good season, and then Rico Gathers. Left tackle, we have Eric Flowers. We did give up Joe Staley, who was 86 overall, so we took a big hit in that department. Um, but Eric Flowers is still young, only two years. He was a first-round pick. He's got size, so hopefully we can train him in at left tackle. If not, again, draft him for agency. Rebuilding this team, guys, is going to be slow. Um, and then... Solomon Thompson has been playing well. Left end, to tackle the Forrest Buckners, coming to his own pretty well. Um, left outside linebacker, we're probably going to need some help at, eventually. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get a guy, a left outside linebacker in there at backup. And then middle linebacker, Bowman, obviously keeping him. He's keeping our defense strong. We're outside linebacker, Ruben Foster, the future. Ray Ray Armstrong, we're able to keep him on the team by putting in Jimmy Ward instead. Actually, what I'm going to do is make Ray Ray Armstrong kind of like the backup to all positions so he gets in a lot because we think he's a good young talent. Looks like he'd make a pretty good left outside linebacker. Maybe we'll have to look into that. Maybe on the defensive line as well. Let's see. Oh, Deshaun Hall's pretty good too. But after him, Ray Ray Armstrong. I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it. Where's our left end? Guys, take him out. We don't have another backup left end, okay. And then the quarterbacks, we have Jalen Collins, our free our trade acquisition earlier this year, followed by Eli Apple, our brand new um, trade acquisition. So we got two good fundamental cornerstone cornerbacks, um, and Jalen Collins, Eli Apple, and then Richard Robinson, Witherspoon, um, LeBlanc apparently is playing over Milliner and Ben Wickery. That's okay with me. Marcus Williams starting at safety, followed by Delano Hill, and then. We'll put Milliner in as a backup safety, since he's not a starting corner. He's backup safety over here too, and Eric Reed, of course. Let's make Marquise Goodwin a returner, followed by Juju Smith-Schuster. Same for punt returns. Let's go that route. And then Tevin Coleman is actually kind of a beast, so we're going to leave him as our third down back and have Tarik Cohen as a secondary third down back in case he's tired. And that'll do it for the roster shakeup, guys. That's the trade deadline. Let's go ahead and get into scouting, practice, games. It's going to be a long episode. Sorry about that. All right, guys. It's coming to re-signing contract time, and our new acquisition, Martavis Bryant, is ready to renegotiate. He's in his last year. Maybe that's why they're okay with making that trade. But we're going to go after him. We really want him at wide receiver, so we're going to go ahead and make him a pretty good offer. $5 million a year, $8 million signing bonus. It's exactly the offer I was hoping to get next season. It'll be great. Awesome. So we have Martavis Bryant locked up now. Looks like we have a couple centers that are ready to renegotiate, but again, I said we're not going to do that. And then a couple guys that are ready to renegotiate next week. But we did get the re-signings done. Let's go ahead, jump into scouting players right away. Let's see where we're weak. We are pretty weak at the offensive line in general. Left tackle, left guard, center. Um, yeah, after that trade, we might have to look for a left tackle. 
see how some of these guys look. That wasn't very good. That's also not very good. That's terrible. Not very good. Not very good. Oof, ugly. I don't know, guys. These guys were all pretty bad. For, even the first guy was like not even that good, but that's that's <laughs> scouting for left tackles. I guess there's not going to be a real good one in this draft. We're going to go ahead and get ready to jump into training uh, with these defensive players. We're simming defense, playing offense. Let's go ahead and get into it. I'll see you guys in training. Alright guys, training is finished. I'm ready to go ahead and launch our game against the 2-5 and five Eagles with our brand new squad. Super excited to try them out this game. Let's go ahead and play the moments. It's a 77 overall, San Francisco 49ers. I believe that's actually better than we were before. Against the 86 overall Eagles. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think we're at 76, maybe we're at 78. Let's go ahead and get into this game. Hopefully get another W, guys. Alright guys, first play of the game, defense needs us. Well, not first play of the game, but first play for our game. For us playing it. Um, comes with five minutes left in the first quarter. Let's go ahead, red zone defense, cover two man. First and ten, they got the ball at the 13-yard line. Hopefully we can close them out here. I'm going to rush with Solomon Thomas because we are in man coverage. Get him. No. And Blunt just literally walks into the end zone. We couldn't break our block with Thomas. Wide open right up the middle. 50th career rushing touchdown for Blunt. Wow. Okay, we failed that moment. That wasn't good. And they're bringing us in to kick a field goal. Awesome. He has terrible accuracy box, but we were able to get that field goal in. I might scout some kickers in this huge draft, let's just say that. Philly's run the score up on us, and we're not getting any chances on offense. It's going to be a tough game to win, guys. They got the ball in the red zone again. See what we can do. I'll pinch the line in case they run up the middle. And I'm coming with Thomas. We were able to knock the ball out with the safety. I believe that was Williams. Yes, it was. Marcus Williams making a good play. His first game starting. And now we're looking to block the field goal. Eric Reed. Let's do Eric Reed. Nope, not happening. Defense needs me again, guys, as if my offense doesn't need me at all. We're still playing defense. I play the moments. Jeez, look at Blunt. 100 yards. Every single time we play a game, this before halftime, he's got 100 yards. Are we that bad? Are we seriously that bad of a defense that every single running back can get 100 yards easy? Like, LeGarrette Blunt of all running backs gets 100 yards in the first half. Are you serious? This is gonna... <laughs> no, not serious. <laughs> this is gonna be a very, very, very hard rebuild, guys. Very hard. Because if we're simming this like we are, our team is not very good. How are we just missing these tackles? I don't understand tackling mechanics at all. Like, I thought I did. And it's just really hard. Alright, let's play zone. Hopefully, we can get an interception. Or just let them get a touchdown. I think we're losing this one, guys. Alright, come on the field. Two minute drill. Let's get some points, they say. We have a minute 35 to go 75 yards. Not quite sure how this is going to go. We could have broken that tackle out, could have been really good. But Evan Engram's getting involved right away, as we had hoped. Hopefully we can get Martavis Bryant open.
Holding. Holding. Why is Garoppolo 6 for 10 for 48 yards in the whole half? What, go what goes on in these Madden simulations? I don't understand. Are we not ever on offense? I don't get it. Oh boy. Ooh, I almost got around that. Please don't be hurt. I was able to drop a dime right in there. Alright, nice catch and run by Coleman. We're moving the ball up the field. I like when we get to play offense, I really do. And we actually get a chance to put some points on the board. Because the rest of our team is not doing that. There we go. There we go. Touchdown! Martavis Bryant in his first game on the 49ers. Managed to get it in on like a drag route. That was crazy. That's why we have him though. He's a good receiver. He's big. He's fast. He can run routes. I told you guys. He's got the skill set to be better than Antonio Brown, they say. Um, but he was on an expiring contract. They were willing to trade him. We went after him. Resigned him. He's probably going to be one of our wide receivers in the future. So I'm super happy to have him here. Awesome play by you. And now they're bringing us in for a 56 yarder. We know Aguayo can't kick this. Oh, no, never mind. Never mind. They didn't, they didn't have the clock stop for us, so. Fourth down alert. Okay, so we just get the fourth down, and then they're done with us, essentially. If we get the fourth down, we have one turnover. Mind 30, this is not going well. So we got the first. Let's see if they take over for us. Yep, they did. Fourth down again. All right, let's just keep getting fourth downs, hopefully. Fourth and eight this time. Got it there. We got it within the 10. Let's do something now, guys. Our red zone, we get it, all right. Let's do this, guys. Let's get some points on the board. Not that we're going to come back, but we can try to get some points. Ah, couldn't get him out. This looks like a good play here. No, Garoppolo. No. We had to get it in there. He was open, we just had to lob it over the linebacker that was in there. It didn't work that time. Martavis Bryant again. He came open on the slant route. Two touchdowns in his first game. Awesome. Well, the Eagles went down and scored another touchdown on our defense. I guess having Eli Apple doesn't really help. That was a good play. I thought we could have broken that, though. I threw it to the outside because there's no one covering him except the safety was on the inside. Ooh, I tried to kind of go on the outside of the blocker there. Didn't quite work that time. Let's rush to the line. we got to get some things down, hopefully save our timeouts. We gotta get in. We gotta get in there, Ingram. Come on, buddy. Oh, almost. At least we stopped the clock. We're almost able to get that slant in there. 300 yards and two touchdowns for Garoppolo. Clearly not enough for us in this game, though. Sweet. Got to Kittle for the touchdown. Awesome. Let's see what happens next. Um, next play of the moment. 
We got an onside kick. I wonder what the odds are of getting this thing. Probably not very good. We were accurate. And we got it! Oh my gosh! Alright. Let's get some yards here. I mean, even if we get a touchdown, we're still down another touchdown. But it doesn't hurt to get points. Oh, seriously, I didn't get out of bounds. That probably would have been a good time to call a timeout. Oh boy, that was bad. At least we stopped the clock. I probably should have called time out there. I let a lot of time run off, but I'm a big believer in saving our timeouts for defense. Um, but I guess even if we get on defense, it doesn't matter much. Okay, that time I was just hoping that Brian could be the bigger guy there. It's probably not the best pass. But I had to give it a try. We're kind of in that, that time set now. I knew that was going to happen. We're going to have to call time out and just go for it on fourth. I needed more time and I didn't have it. And I tried to improvise, but it wasn't going to happen. Too far. Game, ball game, 25 for 40 for Garoppolo. Our defense is just terrible. We can't give up 37 points and expect to win, guys. Um, and play the moments, I can only do so much. We are well on our way to a high draft pick. <laughs> Let's just say that much. Let's go ahead here and just dive into the post game stats, see how that game actually went for us. Garoppolo actually had a pretty good performance, um, probably one of his better ones of the year. Hopefully, he comes back next year pretty good. Otherwise, we might have to explore trading him, honestly. Um, 105 quarterback rating, 25 for 40, 348 yards, three touchdowns, one pick. So pretty good on his stand from his standpoint. Kevin Coleman only got the ball 12 times. We were playing down the whole game, so wasn't really expecting him to get the ball much. 51 yards, 4.2 average. The average is good. Um, Evan Engram in his first game got a lot of targets. Eight receptions, 123 yards. Awesome for him. That's exactly what we want to see. I'd like to see more touchdowns out of him, that's all right. Mark Davis Bryant, his first game, six for 102, two touchdowns, as we want him to be. He's a deep threat that gets a lot of yards per reception and touchdowns. Big body, 6-4. Pierre Garcon, only at 3 for 37, so he's taking a step down after Bryant and Ingram have arrived. Coleman, 3 for 65, really good out of the backfield. And then our other guys. Let's see, defensively, Ruben Foster had nine total tackles. Bowman, eight. Eric Reed, eight. Eli Apple had five. I don't see any sacks or receptions so far. Eli Harrell had a half sack. Solomon Thomas had two sacks off the edge with four total tackles. DeForest Buckner had three tackles. And then Caleb Brantley had another three tackles and half sacks. He's been playing pretty well as a backup D tackle um, out of Florida. But that's it for the stats. Let's go ahead and go to the main menu. All right, guys, that's the end of the game there. We are now 2-6, and six, falling behind a little bit. This year is probably out of our own possibility to make the playoffs. We're going to play it out, give these young guys a chance to develop, um, get better. In the upper right corner, it says we have negative $76 million of funds. I really hope that's not the case. We're at the 26 value, so hopefully we can make some some adjustments in the offseason, get a better team that people want to see, get the ticket revenue up, get a lot better, get our value up a little bit. Our funds, I don't like it, and I don't like our team being the 26 value being in San Francisco. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching episode 11. I'll see you in the next one. Coming at you with Thomas. Let's do this. No, 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 no. Why does that happen? No way. We should have just let them go in there. I tried taking control of my safeties and it slows them down. Wait, did they not get the... They not get the playoff? 